إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار All praise and thanks belong to Allah the Most High We thank Him and we seek His help and aid and ask Him to forgive us and we seek His refuge from the evil of ourselves and the sins that we commit Indeed whomsoever Allah guides no one can lead astray and whomsoever Allah leads astray no one can guide and I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah alone. And that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. The best of speech is the book of Allah. And the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of religious matters are those that are innovated. And every religious innovation is a bid'ah. And every mid'ah is misguidance. And every misguidance will be in hellfire. Amma <coughs> ba'd. They say that you do not really recognize the value of something until you lose it. And it's true with the month of Ramadan, you don't really realize what the month of Ramadan is doing to your life and to your iman. You don't realize the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Ramadan until the month of Ramadan departs. More so than before the month starts and you're about to receive it, we may have forgotten about the month of Ramadan and what it does. But really immediately afterwards, the first, second and third days, you begin to realize the difference between Ramadan and post-Ramadan. As you begin to realize the great na'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where in the month of Ramadan, He was boosting our iman subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was boosting our path to Jannah and bringing us very, very close to Him, so that we can taste what it feels like to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very close to Him when we speak and communicate with Him, when we ask Him, when we remember Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to feel the sweetness of Iman, so that it becomes dearer to us than any other sweetness pertaining to this life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted from us to be boosted in worship in the month of Ramadan so that we could see, first of all, what we can do. Of course, when Allah assists us, but also when we decide to do something. And the heights that we can reach, and then the transformation that this brings to our life, and the changes in our priorities. <clears throat> Allah want us, wanted us to see how our life will be sweeter and better and more calm and peaceful when we turn to Him and away from haram. How a purer life feels like. How a cleaner life feels like. Allah wanted us to see all of this. So that when the month of Ramadan ends, we have that desire to continue what we have gained in the month of Ramadan. 
And I don't know about all of us, but at least some, we may have realized the emptiness that really follows the month of Ramadan. Because in the month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from His Rahmah, He had set this schedule for you. It's an obligation if you have Iman and if you have Islam. You don't really want to escape it. So Allah tells you, start fasting on this day. Start fasting on this hour and minute and end it on this hour and minute. Every day. And then once you accept all of this, it becomes then easier now because you're around people who are fasting. And the habit then is, once you finish your fast, what do you do? You go to the masjid and you start praying. And that is again part of the schedule that Allah has set for all of us. So what you find in the month of Ramadan is that you have filled, occupied most of your day with Allah's worship. In the morning, with fasting. In the evening, once you're finished with your breaking fast, you head to the masjid. And you're praying your obligations. Aisha. And then you follow that with praying taraweeh and you're listening to the Qur'an every single day. To the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every single day. And you're spending extended time in the masjid around people who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who we expect to be among the most pious in the city. That's why they are coming to the masjid every single day. So subhanallah, this persistent and consistent and devoted worship, day after day, leaves its mark on you. And now once you leave the month of Ramadan, and that momentum of collective worship is no longer there, you begin to feel some sense of emptiness. Where is this fast? Where is this salah? Where is this taraweeh? Where is this Qur'an? Where is this dua? And it is there where your role starts. It doesn't end actually, it starts. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you, once the month of Ramadan is over, to implement your own plan. And to implement whatever you have learned in the month of Ramadan and take it to after Ramadan. And that's what we want to do. One of the sunnas, one of the wise sunnas of the Prophet wasallam, was that his actions were consistent. كَانَ عَمَلُهُ دِيمًا كَانَ إِذَا عَمِلَ عَمَلًا أَثْبَتًا if he used to do something, he would be consistent and persistent in its performance. He would be continuous in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, the intensity will vary based on the time and space, the virtue of time and space. Based on your health, availability, how much time you have, that will vary. But what will not vary is the existence of that worship. And the continuity of that worship, that does not vary. That's always there. And if you want to ask yourself, why is that the case? Even in worldly conditions and goals and aspirations. Anyone who wants to achieve something great in this life, has to be persistent in its pursuit until he or she reaches it. You want to graduate, you want a particular job, you want a particular promo promotion, you set your eye, eyes at that goal and you continue to pursue it continuously until you get it. If you waver, you won't get it. If you're not determined, you won't get it. But if you say to yourself every day, or at least every other day, but with a set goal and dedication, then bi idhnillah azza wa this person will get it. And for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the goal was the greatest goal. The goal of course wasn't that I want to just please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Ramadan and then will I, st I will stop. It was I want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala period. And Ramadan is one opportunity among many to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in it. So because that is the goal, and this is the dearest thing that you can achieve in this life. If you think that being a doctor is difficult, being an engineer or a lawyer is difficult, if you think that being a millionaire is difficult, well, getting to Jannah 
is more dear and more valuable than any of these things. And if you have to pay a price for all of these things that we talked about, from your life, from your dedication, from your time, from your concentration, in order to achieve them, do you think that the most valuable objective in this life, which is Jannah, will be cheaper than the, all of these, th these things? And the Prophet ﷺ understood that completely and perfectly, and he also wanted to set that example for everybody who will follow him. So if he used to do something, he'd be continuous, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always there. And if you look at what we have learned in the month of Ramadan, these are the basics of the ibadahs. And what I want to talk about in this khutbah bi'ithnillah is how we can continue to hold on to the basics of these ibadahs. The salah, the qiyam, staying in the masjid, fasting, making dua, making dhikr, spending for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the basics that we should not leave after Ramadan. And we should set our goal as to what I want to do and how I want to do it. So that I, bi'ithnillah, when the next Ramadan comes, I would not have lost the lessons of this Ramadan. No, I'm able to build on them. And I want to begin with fasting. And with the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, من صام رمضان ثم أتبعه ستة من شوال كان كصيام الدهر. The one who fasts Ramadan then follows this with six days of شوال. It will be like fasting the entire year. And there is Subhanallah few lessons that we can learn from this hadith. One of them is the great rahmah and bounty of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That by the way doesn't stop with the end of Ramadan. Remember about all the rahmas, all the barakah that we talked about that is there in Ramadan? It doesn't stop with the last day of Ramadan. Because here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, add to these 30 days, 6 more days of shawwal. And the result would be that you fasted 36. I will count it and I will write it in your book as if you fasted the entire year. 360 days or more. That is in your book, bi'ithnillah, if Allah accepts this from all of us, I mean, it will, it will be written in your book, this person had fasted for the entire year, every single day. And see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here blesses what you do. Very few days. And they're multiplied by 10 to cover the entire year. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only wants a little bit from us. And gives us a lot in return. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of His names is Ash-Shakur. Ash-Shakur is the thankful. You have to appreciate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the thankful. If not, the 36 days will be only 36 days. And you would have to have to fast a lot more for you to come, to come even close to fasting an entire year. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the thankful, ash-shakur, who appreciates the little things that you do. Human beings are not shakurs. We're not like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like that. And He says, only this little, and I will give you so much for it. So the first thing you learn from this, take advantage of it. Whether you fast them all together or you separate them, you don't want to leave the month of Shawwal without fasting something. The next thing that we learn from this is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to connect and to extend our acts of worship. Just like praying, the five daily prayers where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had put a sunnah before and a sunnah after. The sunnah before gets you ready for the obligation. For Salatul Dhuhr, for Salatul Asr, gets you ready for it. The sunnah after complements, compensates whatever deficiency is there and also extends that act so that the person is saying, I am here willing and ready to give more for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Extra. So this act, the six days of Shawwal, acts like the sunnah after the obligation. The sunnah before was fasting from Sha'ban, gets you ready for Ramadan. This sunnah after 
compensates for any deficiency in Ramadan, but also extends this act. It's not like, oh, once Ramadan is done, I'm done with fasting. No. They say, subhanAllah, one of the thawab, the benefits, the rewards of a good act, is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lead you to good acts after it. Thawab al-hasana, al-hasanatu ba'daha. Thawab al-hasana, al-hasanatu ba'daha. That is, you, if you open a good door, one of the benefits and rewards of opening this good door is that Allah leads you to another good door that He opens to you. So one of the benefits of actually fasting Ramadan is that you look at it at that and say, if I only can add six days to it, I will fast the entire year, I'm going to do it. This eagerness and desire to do more good is one of the thawab, rewards of fasting in Ramadan. And they say, subhanAllah, that one of the marks and signs of an accepted fast is that. Is that Allah leads you to more good after Ramadan. And one of the signs, Allahu A'lam, but one of the signs of a fast that was so-so, is that you're not led after Ramadan to do more good for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's abrupt, a sudden stop. So if it leaves a mark with you, if it leaves an impact, then there's a sign that your fasting was meaningful. And one of that, those meanings is that you're ready to do something after Ramadan. You have that desire. And the last thing we can learn from this hadith, and maybe there's more, the last thing that we learn from this hadith is also, once you actually achieve something great, which is a type of ibadah that Allah had made possible for you, you want to thank Allah for it. And we thank Allah for it by saying, Alhamdulillah that Allah helped us fast Ramadan. But also by saying, let me also perform some good deeds so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would accept what I've done even more so. So fasting the six days is also a form of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. But, and we continue with fasting, it doesn't really stop there. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would fast three days from every month. So the connection, the link between you and the fast doesn't stop. And the benefit that it gives to you does not go away. And subhanallah, Another thing also to think about, once the month of Shawwal starts, which tells you that really in the mind of a Muslim, the ibadah doesn't stop. Once you finish one, yeah, you can take inshallah a few days as a break to re-energize. But your eyes now, once that is done, is set on the other ibadah. Shawwal is the first month of the months of Hajj. So anyone who's planning on going to Hajj, Start planning from now, making dua from now, asking Allah for assistance from now. People used to start back in the days, their journey to Hajj after Ramadan. Ibadah connected to Ibadah. Now we don't have to do that, but in anticipation, in dua, in getting ready physically, spiritually, and all of that, you start building to that Hajj time from now. And if you're not going still, that is in your sight. The month of Dhul Hijjah, the day of Arafah, the other Eid, the other great season where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives. It's not that my ibadah is going to dip only to come back again at that season. No, it's going to be bi'ilnillah continuous. The intensity is not going to be the same intensity as Ramadan. But it's not going to disappear. Until I connect it again bi'ilnillah with that other great season of worship. And that's how we operate as being worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه. الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه وأصلي وأسلم على رسوله محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم As we said all of these combined acts of worship work together to soften our hearts raise us to heightened spiritual levels connect us really with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ways that we've missed probably for the rest of the year and if we want to maintain all of that, maintain these acts of worship. Anchor yourself 
through the day of Friday, through reading the Quran, through coming to the masjid. And let's inshallah give you a few quick practical steps that you can take. First of all, reading the Quran. The Prophet wasallam says that the life, the soul, the house that does not have anything of the Quran in it is a wreck. It's like a wreckage. So you can't really afford to spend an entire day without reading something from the Quran. And you can build up to it. You can start by reading one page a day. Like you actually every day, you don't forget to brush your teeth, eat your breakfast, lock your door when you leave the house. This is, these are essentials. You add to that essentials or to those essentials, reading the Quran. This is something I'm going to tell myself I can't live without. And I will not allow myself to live without. And if I forget it, I'll come back home and make up for it. But never will I leave a day without reading one part of the Quran. You can be begin with one page, build up to two, five, and ten. And let's at least read half a juz of the Quran. Ten pages in Mus'haf al Madina is half a juz of the Quran. You do that, you'll finish the Quran in 60 days. 60 days, and you'll finish the Quran. If you come to us, right, after our reading of the Quran has disappeared and say, finish the Quran in 60 days, it will be impossible for us. But if you continuously do that, be part of your routine, bi'ilnillah azza wa jal. Like your dinner and lunch. So read the Quran every day. And you will see the effect that this will have on you and on your family. Guaranteed, bi'ilnillah azza wa jal. You just be persistent. Not just one week or two weeks, not just one month and we stop, till we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again, if He extends our life, next Ramadan. You'll see the difference. So read the Qur'an every day. Anchor yourself in, in Al-Jum'ah. Al-Jum'ah is the best day of the week, is the Eid of the week. And there is great worship in it, inshallah. This is not the time to discuss it in detail. But coming early, bathing before you come, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reading Surah Al-Kahf, listening to the khutbah, making dua between Asr and Maghrib, just engaging throughout that day and night in ibadah, anchor yourself on Friday. This is your weekly reminder. But you also need daily reminders. And this daily reminders comes with what? Attend one salah in the masjid if you can. At least one salah. And if you find that there's a halaqa, a study circle that's being offered weekdays or week, uh, weekends, attend those, seek them, ask about them, because they'll teach you your religion and they will remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you forget. So seek them and benefit from the knowledge that is being given to you. And the last thing that we are going to say, insha'Allah. All of this is our effort. But with all of that, we need what? We need Allah's assistance. We need Allah's help. So, sta'inu bi dhikrillahi azza wa jal wa dua. Don't forget to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time and to make dua to Him. Ya Allah, help me. Ya Allah, my iman is weak, so help me with that. Ya Allah, I'm finding it difficult to go to the salah. Help me with that. With reading the Quran, help me with that. Whenever you find that your iman is weak, your will has declined, ask Allah for help. And continuously help yourself with remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Astaghfirullah all the time. La ilaha illallah all the time. Don't forget about this, that, about this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you fuel to your iman, fuel to your life when you remember Him. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een. We worship you alone and we seek assistance from you alone. And both of these things are connected. When you start worshipping Allah, Allah will give you assistance. And we found that in the month of Ramadan. Allah assisted us in fasting and in praying. Things that if you ask us to do now on our own, we won't be able to, most of us. But Allah assisted us. So when you start worshipping, Allah will help you. Take your hand, push you in the right direction. You just have to start and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for assistance. 
So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who are forgiven in the month of Ramadan. Ya Allah, accept from us all our ibadah in the month of Ramadan. And forgive us and our families and all the Muslims in the month of Ramadan. And make us of those who have learned the lessons of the month of Ramadan. And make us of those who do not forget about these lessons after the month of Ramadan. Ya Allah, make us of those who are consistent and persistent in, in your worship. Allah, make us of those who are consistent and persistent in your worship. And that we do not leave it after the month of Ramadan. And that we continue to worship you as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Continue to worship you all the time. Ya Allah, we ask you that you increase iman in our hearts. Ya Allah, increase taqwa in our hearts. Ya Allah, make us of those who remember you all the time. Ya Allah, make us of those who are close to you all the time. Allah, increase our knowledge. Ya Allah, teach us what benefits us and benefit us with what we learn. Ya Allah, guide us to the straight path. Ya Allah, protect us from all harm in this life and in the next life. And grant us everything good in this life and in the next life. Allahumma inna nas'aluka fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. Allahumma a'inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Allahumma sallim lana Ramadan wa taqabbalhu minna salima. Allahumma taqabbal minna ma amilna min al-khayr fi Ramadan. Waghfir lana fihi al-zalal wa al-taqsir rabb al-alamin. Wahfadhna ila Ramadan al-qabil rabb al-alamin. Allahumma ja'alna mimman yudim ibadataka rabb al-alamin. ولا تجعلنا من المنقطعين عنك بعد رمضان اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك وأقيم الصلاة